So the things that I'm going to show you today, um, in turn, I'm going to show you basically how to analyze a poem in terms of sound. Okay. I'm going to show you how to analyze a poem in terms of sound. Now, this is important for uh, romantic poetry and classical, a lot of like, you know, classical poetry. Now, as you know, our focus for this unit is going to be on um, contemporary poetry. And contemporary poetry does not use this quite so, quite so much. Um, and certainly I'm going to give you more information than you're going to need to know for the sake of provincials and whatnot. But I, my idea here is that uh, if you understand how these are analyzed, it will give you some tools in case uh, you want to look at your poetry in those terms. Um, now, the first thing I want to show you guys is rhyme scheme. And this is how we talk about rhyme. Uh, we talk, now, you guys heard about rhyme scheme before? All right. So, does it, so here's how rhyme, rhyme scheme works, even though many of you may already know this. Okay. We take a look at the rhymes. So we have... Um, dreary and weary. Now that's an internal rhyme and we give the first rhyme the letter A. Weary and dreary. The second rhyme we're going to give the letter B and that is lore door door again and more. The third, the third one is napping, tapping, rapping, rapping again, tapping again. Okay. If I go to the next, so that's one stanza, right? So this is a stanza. Now certainly this word stanza is going to be useful to you guys because definitely all poetry is still, not all poetry, but I mean stanza is still a useful, a useful thing. All right, so that's stanza. So our rhyme scheme for this stanza is something like A, A, B, C, 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 B, C, B, B. Okay, that's pretty complex. Let's see if, let's see if, it, if it stays consistent. Let's look to the next, to the next stanza. Distinctly I remember it was in the bleak December and each separate dying ember remember December ember. All right. Then we have floor B Lenore Lenore evermore. So our B, our, you notice that our B rhyme here follows the same pattern. The second line, the, the one, two, so the second, two, three, four, five, six. The second line, the fourth, fifth, and sixth lines are all B rhymes, right? And the first rhyme, the A rhyme, is repeated in the first line. There's an internal rhyme there. How about C? Let's take a look here. We've got Moro. Borrow, sorrow. Sorrow is twice, just like rapping, tapping is twice. Um, and that's it. So again, we, so we've got A, B, C, B, 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 A, B, C, B, B, B. So the end rhymes, these ones are called end rhymes. These are, these, this will be the end rhymes. Okay, and these would and this would be internal rhyme. Internal means it's inside the line. Internal rhyme. So the end rhymes follow the same pattern, and the internal rhymes seem to follow the same pattern too. So we can we can bet, and you guys probably have already figured out that he's going to follow this pattern. So let's take a look at the next one just to be certain. Uh, we've got purple curtain. It's different, isn't it? And the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain. Uncertain. 
and curtain. Hmm. Oh, that's, oh, that's right. That is right. That's all it is. And then we've got before, door, door, more. All right? Implore, door. I go all the way down if I wanted to. Door, more. So B is always working. A, A, stronger, longer, A, A. And C, we've got beating, repeating, entreating, entreating, napping, rapping, tapping, tapping twice again. That's happening a lot. So we have the same rhyming pattern. We have these three rhymes which working both at the end and both the end rhyme and the internal rhyme. All right. Now, what else do we have? Um, Obviously, we've noticed that, this, that the, the B rhyme here is always the same sound. And the reason, and it's always the more, 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 more. And eventually, when the raven arrives, we've got, quote the raven, nevermore. And of course, quote the raven, nevermore, gets repeated many, many times throughout the poem. And that is therefore called a refrain. This is the refrain. All right, now, so that's rhyme. But there's a lot more going on in terms of sound other than just rhyme and, of course, refrain. Take a look back here to, um, to this, the third stanza. In the third stanza, we've got this going on. And the silken, sad, uncertain, rustling, of each purple curtain, the silken, sad, uncertain rustling. All right? When you have, this is, this, this is two things. When you repeat a consonant sound, it's called consonants. When you specifically repeat the S sound, repeat the S consonant, you know consonants, right? We're talking about anything that's not a vowel is a consonant. So B is a consonant, C is, some, is, is a consonant, D, F, G, H. So basically everything is a consonant except for A, E, I, O, U, and sometimes Y. So repeat, if you repeat the S sound, that specifically is called sibilance. So quite often in cartoons, when a snake talks, they use a lot of S sounds because snakes hiss. A snake is naturally sibilant. So snakes use sibilance in cartoons in their speech to sort of symbolize that. In this case, it's not a snake. Why are we using sibilance here? And the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain is there any reason why we might want to use sibilance specifically in this line, given what he's talking about? What is he talking about? The silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain filled, thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before. Yes, he's scared. What is he scared of right now? Knocking on the door. Knocking on the door. And what specifically in these two lines is making him feel afraid? Of what? The rustling of what? So what is the purple curtain you're talking about? What purple curtain? It's got to be like his... Uh, the wind's moving the curtains. So there's like some sort of wind or something is rustling in it. Like It's like a curtain of his, of his window or his door or whatever. Yeah. And so this thing is rustling. And what sound do you suppose it's making? A hissing sound. A sibilant sound. Right? So do you see the connection there? Yeah. So when we have that kind of connection between the sound of the words and the sound of the thing that the word describes, what do we call that? Um. Curtain makes S sound 
all right? Words describing curtain also make S sound. There's a word for that. What are some other words that sound like the thing they describe? That's the word. Thank you. Onomat onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia. I'm probably spelling that correctly. So there's one kind of onomatopoeia, which is like boom, bang, pow. You know, words that are described that that are actually sounds. Then there's another kind of onomatopoeia, which is like the murmuring of the doves in immemorial, the, you know, the, the buzzing of the bees and murmuring of the doves in immemorial elms, where it's like the murmuring of the doves in immemorial elms. It's like the words sound like murmuring, and they're talking about murmuring. You know, or you have a word, or you, have, you have a sentence that sounds like a train going, chick, 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 and it's describing a train, like. The train clucked along the clickety clackety. You know, that's obviously not a good example, but all right. So we have a lot going on here in terms of sound. We've also got obviously repeating of words, um, but we've also got things like um, quaint and curious. Over many a quaint and curious, we've got. Um, Surcease of sorrow, lost Lenore, entreating entrance, filled me with fantastic. Well, yeah, I'm not sure about that one. Deep into that darkness. He's several times here. It's it's conspicuous. Now sometimes this might turn out to just be random, like you just pick it out. It wasn't really meant that, went to, meant to be there. But I would argue uh, that it's meant to be here. These these repeating of the initial, of specifically the initial consonant sound or the initial sound. What do you call that? Repeating the initial sound of a word. Alliteration. So two L's in alliteration? Yes. Okay. Um, oh, one more. Assonance. What is assonance? Assonance is like consonants. Instead of repeating the consonant sound, we're repeating the, the vowel sound. Where can we find some repeating vowel sounds? Pretty easy, actually. Dreary, weary. All the rhymes are kind of all the all the rhymes are that way. But what else? How about purple curtain? Er. Here we have the er, and here we have the er. Uncertain, uncertain, purple, er, 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 er. Ill, ill. Eat, eat. All right. So purple curtain. Use that a, a certain purple curtain. We have the er. This is how I should make the sounds. By the way, this is a better way to make sounds. Instead of like quotation marks, you put two slanty uh, two slashes there. It's like a phonetic. It means it means read it phonetically. Er. So uncertain purple curtain. That is repeating vowel sound. Equals assonance. Um, there's one other thing that he's doing here in terms of um, the sound that it's not that, it, and that's the rhythm. There's a very specific rhythm. At play here. You'll notice, of course, that 
it it kind of reads. It has this kind of bouncy like da 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 da, right? Da 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 da, um, and that tells you that there's a beat to it. Okay, do me a favor here. Um, snap your fingers in a beat. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. While I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, rapping at my chamber door. Only this and nothing more. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so there's a rhythm going on here. Okay. And it's a, it's a rhythm where it's like one, two, one, two, one, two. And there's basically only two kinds of one, two rhythm. Okay. There's, there's other kinds of rhythm where it's like one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two, or... One two, you know, one two, one one two, one two, one one two. You know, there's different kinds of rhythm, right? If you're like a drummer or something, maybe you know about this stuff. But there's basically two kinds of one two rhythm, okay? It's like, and this is how we do rhythms. We either say it's either like this. Um, I'm gonna do it down here. Rhythm. Okay. We talk about what is the bass unit. The bass unit. The base unit of a root of a rhythm is called a foot. All right. So if you have two beats, there are two kinds of. Well, there are more than two kinds, but we're going to talk. I'll talk, we'll talk about two kinds of. So yeah, let's go like this. This is how we. If you have a syllable like this, this means unstressed beat. And this is. A stressed beat. So if you have two beats, it might be unstressed, unstressed of the it's hard, you can't keep you can't keep that up obviously. You could have stressed, stressed, big, bad. You could have unstressed followed by stressed, um like present. Or you could have stressed followed by unstressed. Present. Now I'm going to bet that most of your names follow this. Vincent. Thomas. Daniel. All right, there you go. What's the difference between Daniel as a guy's name and Daniel as a girl as a girl's name? Daniel. Danielle. It's spelled different, but that's that, that's the difference, right? That's the difference. So, so we so taking a look here. What is what is the the rhythm here? This is how we go. Follow my follow my lead here. Deep. I'm just gonna do the first. I'm just gonna do the uh, the the, uh, the the heavy ones. Deep into that darkness peering long I stood there wondering fearing now there are certain words if it's a two syllable word there's a the, 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 the stress has to go in a certain place if it's a one syllable word you could stress it or not you know like into we could say deep into that or we can say deep into that, or deep into that, right? But darkness, it has to be darkness. It can't be darkness, right? So this has to be darkness, peering, wondering, or wondering. If we take the D out, if we take the E out, and sometimes you'll see in like, if you, for those of you guys who, who like go to church, uh, when you sometimes you're reading like a hymn book and uh, and you see like uh, it, it they'll it, they'll have a word like wondering but for wondering they'll go like this wond and they'll have a little apostrophe r i n g that's because they want to get rid of that syllable so that so that, so that instead of 
instead of wondering, they've got one drink. That keeps, it's because when you sing it in poetry or in, you've seen that, right? So when you sing it, whether in poetry or in song, you want to take out the syllable so it, me, so it matches the right beat. All right? So, fearing, doubting, dreaming, dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. So as we do this, we start to kind of think about trying to make it regular. But the silence was, was, you know, unbroken. And the stillness gave no token. So if we read it naturally, are you lost now? <laughs> okay, this is what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to skip. So there's a question, right? How, how regular is this? Let me skip to the punchline. Here's the punchline. This is written in trochaic. Here's the word, fancy word. Trochaic. That means that the foot, the, the foot, the basic rhythm is stressed followed by unstressed. That's a tr called a trochee. Okay? So th this starts with a stress. Once. Over. It starts with a stress. So it's trochaic. This is trochaic octa oop, octameter. Octameter means that there are eight of them. So octa means eight. So eight times trochee. So this, so this thing times eight equals equals trochaic octameter. All right, I want you guys to do me a favor. Count one and two and three and to all the way to all the way to eight. Okay, ready? Here we go. One and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and one, two. Good. Back into the chamber, turning all my soul within me burning. Soon again I heard a tapping somewhat louder than before. How many beats are there in each line? Eight. Alright. So that in a nutshell. So that in a nutshell, and of course you could go and find out, okay, so what what, what is this one called? This one's called iambic. And you can Google this stuff. And of course, if you want to know like what two is diameter, trimeter, tet tetrameter, pentameter, hexameter, heptameter, octameter. Uh, I forget what nine is. All right, nonameter. So you can Google that stuff if you want. But that in a nutshell it are the words that we use to talk about the sound of poetry. Now, hold on, hold on. Here is your homework. You guys have homework today. Your homework is to read the philosophy of composition. Now, this essay uses a lot of very difficult vocabulary. Don't stress yourself out. He writes in long sentences. He uses some fancy vocabulary. But I want you to get the main idea. So he's describing how he wrote the poem and why he wrote the poem the way he did. So the question I want you to be able to answer is, according to this essay, how did he write the poem? Why did he write the poem the way he did? If you can answer that, if you can answer that question after reading this essay, then you've understood it well enough. Okay, so don't stress yourself out too much, but please do read it to, from beginning to end. Don't worry about not understanding words. Use a dictionary somewhat, but also just get the main idea. Any questions? Thank you very much for your listening today. Have a great day.